From childhood's hour, I've not been as others were. I have not seen as others saw. I could not bring my passion from a common spring. From the same source I have not taken, my sorrow I could not awaken, my heart to joy at the same tone, and all that I loved, I loved alone. Then in my childhood, in the dawn of a most stormy life was drawn, from every depth of good and ill, the mystery which binds me still. From the torrent of the fountain, from the red cliff of the mountain, from the sun which round me rolled in its autumn tint of gold. From the lightning in the sky as it passed me flying by, from the thunder and the storm and the cloud that took the form, when the rest of heaven was blue, of a demon in my view. That's the only poem I know by heart, and it's by Edgar Allan Poe. Tomorrow is Edgar Allan Poe's birthday, which is the date of a yearly ritual that's become one of the most mysterious events in the last 100 years. Who is the Poe Toaster? The poem at the beginning of this video was called Alone, and yeah, for some reason, it's, it's the only poem I know by heart. What can I say? It, it appealed to me in my angst-filled teen years. No one knows the pain that I know, except Poe. Edgar Allan Poe is a dark and mysterious dude who wrote dark and mysterious literature, including A Telltale Heart, The Fall of the House of Usher, and The Raven the only poem that has an NFL team named after it. Nevermore. That's not a joke, by the way. Edgar Allan Poe is from Baltimore, Baltimore Ravens. That's where it came from. But in his death, he's become part of one of the most mysterious traditions in American history. Starting sometime in the 1930s until 2009, a mysterious, anonymous visitor would visit Poe's grave and leave three roses and a bottle of Martel cognac, sometimes with notes. And nobody knows who this person is. And here's where it gets crazy. It's not just that some guy leaves something on the gravestone. This has become a whole tradition that attracts onlookers. Sometime between midnight and 6 a.m., an anonymous person, it's assumed to be a male, enters the Westminster Hall burial ground, wearing a black coat, a black hat, a white scarf, and a cane. And he approaches Poe's original gravestone, he's been moved since then, but this was his original burial spot. And the guy puts three roses down, pours a glass of cognac for himself, makes a toast, leaves the cognac, and walks away. Why this person used cognac, nobody knows. There's not really any symbolism there that ties into Poe. It may just be that that was the toaster's favorite drink. In fact, Poe wrote a short story called The Cask of Amontillado, which is a type of sherry. So if they wanted it to make it about Poe, that would have been a better choice. So cognac is probably just something that the Poe toaster enjoyed, which we don't know who this person is. For over 70 years, this person performed this ritual and managed to keep their identity a secret. What we do know is that in 1999, the tradition was handed off to the original person's son because the note stated that the original Poe Toaster had actually died and passed the tradition off to him. Witnesses also reported that the Poe Toaster looked a lot younger after 1998. The son didn't seem to be as into the tradition as his father was. He started leaving notes that referenced football when the Ravens were in the Super Bowl and uh, he made political statements in his notes, and he also tended to just kind of show up in street clothes and not take the whole thing as seriously. Which might explain why 2009, the bicentennial of Poe's birth, was the last time the Poe Toaster visited. Yeah, 2010 was the first year that the Poe Toaster did not show up, and he hasn't been back since. In 2015, not wanting this tradition to end, the Maryland Historical Society decided to resurrect it and bring it back, this time in a much more manufactured way. They actually held a competition for who would be the next Poe Toaster, and they did it way differently. They did it during the daytime. They had readings of Poe's works with apple cider, and the guy showed up and he did different things. He played a violin and left the violin there. It was a different deal. I mean, it's, it's cool that they brought it back, but it's, it's not the same. The original Poe Toaster is, is one of my favorite stories because there's just so much humanity behind it. I mean, this is a guy who either felt a deep, deep connection to Edgar Allan Poe and maintained this tradition his entire life because of that, or maybe it was just something that he did one time and he thought it was fun, so he did it again, and then just kind of kept doing it. And then after a while, it became a thing that everybody expected, so he felt like he had to keep doing it. These things have a way of snowballing. For example, there's a sketch comedy show from Britain called That Mitchell and Webb Look that I have completely fallen in love with. It's some of the best sketch comedy I've ever seen. And a couple of years ago, for whatever reason, at the beginning of the year in January, I binge watched the show and I really enjoyed it. It was a cool way to start the year, you know? And so I did it last year and, and then I just finished doing it this year. And, and 
I'll probably do it again next year. I don't know, it's, it's just, I, I enjoy it. It's like a way of extending the holidays or something. So on one hand, I appreciate the dedication of the Poe toaster, but on the other hand, I appreciate the fact that the mystery was maintained. Because like I said, there were spectators for this thing. There were years where over 100 people gathered around to watch this guy do his thing, and, and none of them bothered him. None of them insisted on you know tackling him and finding out who he was. In fact, there's only one photograph in existence of this guy doing it. It was from 1990. It was a Life magazine photographer. Everyone respected the mystery. Because let's face it, whoever the guy was that was the Poe Toaster, he was just some guy. It wasn't going to be like some famous, you know, bombshell development if somebody found out who it was. It would just be some guy. There's no way that that guy would be as interesting as the fact that nobody knows who he is. The fact that people were able to just put whatever personal motives they might have aside and just let the mystery be is amazing to me. Go humans. Now there was a guy in 2007 that claimed to be the Poe Toaster. His name was Sam Porpora. Um, he was 92 years old at the time, and he claimed that he started doing it back in the 1960s just as some kind of a publicity stunt. The problem is there's a lot of holes in his story. For one thing, there are reports of the Poe Toaster doing his thing back into the 1930s, definitely the 1940s, so when he says he started in the 60s, that can't be right. Also, there's the fact that the Poe Toaster apparently died in 1999 and passed it on to his son. This guy's saying this in 2007, so that doesn't make any sense. So his claims are considered to be not credible, but who knows. This is a channel that talks about science and talks about answers to things, but I gotta be honest, sometimes the mystery is better. It's better to just leave the mystery and let it be there. But this was just a story that I always thought was cool. I wanted to share it with you guys for Random Thursday, being that tomorrow is Poe's birthday, so everybody raise a glass to Edgar Allan Poe and his dark, demented soul. If you have any theories about the Poe Toaster or know about any other really cool mysteries that take place maybe in your hometown, please share it in the comments down below. So you've been watching Random Thursdays. Thank you so much for watching. T-shirts available at answerswithjoe.com shirts. And in the meantime, you guys go out, have an eye-opening rest of the week, and I'll see you on Monday. Love you guys. Take care.